So they say a Muslim woman is oppressed. Let's find the facts. And those who are calling for the freedom of women, let's call for the equality. Let's call for justice. Let's save these Muslim women from the oppression of today. So let's free her, please. Free her from what? Free her from her dignity, of course. Free her from the clothes that she wears. Free her from the pride that she has. Free her that she doesn't know who the ancestors were. Let's free this girl. Let's set her free. Come on, girl, come on down. Come on down, where you have no value. Come on down, where your price is for the highest bidder. Come on down, where every time they can hear you will look at you. Come on down, that you'll be judged according to 36, 24, 36. If you fit the bill, you're good. How big the measurement, how good you look, it's not what you have inside, it's what you have outside. It is a superficial, short-lived, a mission stick that is judged by a human being. They put you like a, a hanger. You feel like a toy. You're a slave to a man that tells you what to do, what not to do, what to wear, what not to wear. Is that the freedom you're telling me about? Or are you a slave to Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula? A man that doesn't care who you are, where you go, you're gonna end up in the hellfire after him? Or Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula that wants you to go in eternal happiness? Is that the freedom you're telling me about? If this is who you are? It's a choice you have to make, Ukhti. There's no shyness. Being shy is a negative characteristic. You're supposed to be assertive and aggressive and outgoing and loud and noisy. You find that young Muslim sisters are bumping into the brothers and pushing them around and screaming in the elevators and laughing loudly. This is something that you cannot see in Muslim countries when you go to the rural areas. This haya is lost. This haya is lost even from the Muslims who are living in the West. And these are very important qualities because haya is a branch of Iman. Every successful man needs a Khadija. So the first person to embrace Islam was a woman. The first person to die for Islam was a woman. Sumeya. The greatest scholar of Islam was a woman. Aisha. The person who loved the Prophet the most was a woman. Who was that woman? Fatima. The person who made the biggest sacrifice for Islam in one day was a woman. Khansa. One of the greatest fighters in Islamic history was a woman. Khawla bint al-Azwar. She fought on the back of horses, killed many kuffar, and spurred the mujahideen on to go on. The warrior behind the veil, a woman. Women were at the forefront of this Islamic awakening, side by side with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This evening is for every sister that lives in defense of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. This evening is for every sister that has forgotten who she is. I want to speak to you, but the real you. I don't want to speak to the lipstick, or the color contacts, or the pink hair, or the loud gum, or the head bouncing to the iPod, or the cowgirl boots, or the fake nails. I want to speak to you, the real you, your heart and your soul and your mind about those things buried deep down inside of you that I wish that you could remember. Don't you remember who you are? وَنِسَاءٌ كَاسِيَاتٌ عَارِيَاتٌ مَائِلَاتٌ مُمِلَاتٌ and women that are kasiyat, they have clothes on, they have fabric on their bodies. Ariyat, but they're naked. They're wearing clothes, but it's as if they're not wearing anything. Like the women we see nowadays. Ma'ilat, mumilat, they sway side to side in the way they walk, the way they talk, and the way they interact with the opposite gender. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, La yadkhulna al-jannah. 
وَلَا يَجِدْنَ رِيحَهَ They do not enter Jannah, these two types of people. And they will not even be able to find the fragrance of Jannah. The women that leave the house with the shape of their bodies defined, or their hair shown, or they are decorated in one way, shape, or form, or they are perfumed, Every neck that turns, every eye that looks, you share in the sin of the person that committed it. You could be upon the bus, reading Qur'an or making dhikr, and you don't even realize it, that guy whose eyes fall on your thigh, or his eyes fall upon your arms, or your neck, or your waist, or your legs, any of this, you get the exact same sin because you made that sin a possibility. And it appeared to them before Allah what they never expected. Sins and sins and sins and sins, mountains, never expected it. The higher the skirt, the higher the pain. The more buttons open on the blouse, the higher the pain. The prettier the hair, the higher the pay. They trick the women into thinking the attention they can grab to what? To feed their perverse desires. They brainwashed women into thinking that was value. And they thought they were liberated and they finally achieved equality. But I want to say they might have tricked the women. But not you, not my sister, not the slave of Allah. <laughs> of hijab hijab is something which is extremely important it's not something which is cultural as many women falsely think today it was a culture of the Arabs to wear the hijab and it's got nothing to do with the religion another reason why we need to look at this topic Ikhwani is because we find that this is a topic which I think many sisters are confused about so they might wear a headscarf but they're not fulfilling the conditions of hijab for a Muslim woman there's a big big difference between wearing a piece of material on your head and fulfilling the conditions of hijab this is an aspect of the deen which is being uh, which is being attacked it's being mocked at and people are trying to make the Muslims those who are not firmly grounded in their Islam they're trying to make them differ and so people are not practicing Islam in their day-to-day -day life and they don't look at, is, at Islam as a way of life first condition of hijab is that it should cover all of the body apart from what has been exempted so this just doesn't mean the headscarf the khimar no what it actually means is hijab is the full garment so for example when the sister says I'm going to put my hijab on she shouldn't just be referring to her headscarf it should be the whole outfit the whole attire which allows her to guard her modesty it's a woman's duty because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tell the women of the believers. And it clearly, clearly states that their adornments should be covered. So all over their bodies. Allah says, draw the, the veils all over their bodies. It's not enough to be wearing tight clothes, etc. And you just put a headscarf on. This is not from the deen. So my sister, you've put your abaya on. But what's the point in wearing an abaya if there's diamonds and crystals and all sorts of fancy patterns and it's green and blue and orange and red? My sisters, it needs to be plain and it shouldn't be a beautification in and of itself. And it needs to be something which is not going to draw attention to yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, And stay in your houses and do not display yourselves like that of the times of ignorance. Subhanallah. And then to support this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in an authentic hadith, there are three people, do not ask me about them. And a woman whose, hub, whose husband is absent, and he left her with everything that she needs. And after he left her, she made an open display of herself. So while her husband is there, 
She dresses modestly, but subhanallah, when the husband or the father is not there, she goes out and she shows her display. She openly makes an open display. And the Prophet ﷺ said, don't ask me about this people. Don't ask me about this group of people. Ikhwani, very, very important, something which our sisters just don't understand. It should be loose, not tight, so that it describes any part of the body. I'm sure every single one of us, and it's a plague, if you go to a busy place, you will see a sister in hijab and she will be wearing clothes that are so tight, Ikhwani, there is nothing left except that you can see everything. This is completely haram. Hijab is not just covering the color of your skin. Hijab is an overall state of being. And of course, if you're wearing jeans, you can't do it. If you're wearing leggings, you can't do it. The only way that a sister can cover herself is to wear an abaya or to wear a jilbab or something else which is a loose fitting. It should not be perfumed. Sisters nowadays, they wear a hijab, they're wearing the abaya, they're wearing the jilbab. And subhanallah, they wear so much perfume that you can smell them from the other side of the room. If they walk past you, it gives you a headache. Ikhwani, this is completely forbidden by the Prophet It should not resemble the clothes of men. Sisters, when you dress, don't dress like men. Don't be wearing jeans and don't be wearing other things that are for the men. It's not permissible for a woman to wear jeans and then wear hijab. Ikhwani, it's extremely important. The Messenger of Allah cursed the man who wears woman's clothes and the woman who wears men's clothes. Finally, it should not be a garment of fame and vanity. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhi narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, whoever wears a garment of fame and vanity in this world, Allah will clothe him in a garment of humiliation on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and then he will cause the fire to flame up around him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to humiliate us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. <laughs> There is no one on this earth more beautiful than a Muslim woman. There's no one who comes close to that. Who is a servant of Allah. Who dresses to please Allah.